Yo, what's happening, people? Welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out podcast. G Man out here. Um, and this is episode. Let me check. But this is a solo one. Uh, K West should be joining anytime soon. But I'm not feeling too well, so I just wanted to get started. It's gonna be a bit of a short one. Um, and Kibbs had the baby, baby Nia. So congratulations to Kib. Uh, Kibbs, she's absolutely adorable. Uh, I'm so happy for him, but he just needs some time. Um, so yeah, this is episode three five eight, three hundred fifty eight. We're getting there. We're getting to that thousand mark, but lots to go. Lots of hard work to do. But yeah, Kibbs had the baby, baby Nia, this week on May 9th. Um, so absolutely great news. Um, uh, the mother's doing well. My sister in law, she's doing well. She's just recovering. Uh, Kibler's doing well. Obviously, you know, uh, a lot of um, uh, I don't know what it's like to have a baby. One day I will experience it. But based on what I've heard from friends and family and whatnot, you know, it's a lot of hard work right now. Less sleep and all that sort of stuff. So inshallah, one day I will experience all of that. But yeah, he's he's doing all right. Hopefully, Kibler will be back next week. But However time, however long he needs, uh, we'll give him that. And for now, you've just got me. Um, and K West hopefully should be joining soon. If not, you got me for the solo to just give a couple updates on what's been going on this week with the Brothers Geek Out. I'm not feeling too well, like I said. Don't know what happened Friday night, went out for dinner. And then I had an ice cream. It was supposed to be a milkshake. It turned out to be a bloody ice, ice cream, right? They called it a thick milkshake. And I was like, all right. Well, and they gave me a straw. So I'm thinking, still should be drinkable as a milkshake. It was literally an ice cream. I don't know what happened. My immune system must have went down a little. And then, you know, something got me. So since then, I've just been feeling a bit under the weather. Today, I feel a bit basic. That night, I didn't get no sleep. So... Obviously, didn't get a chance to recover because sleep is the best recovery. But then uh, yesterday night, I took a shot, took my vitamins, took a shot of night nurse, and uh, I feel, still feel banged up. Hopefully today, hopefully tonight when I get some sleep, I'll bust a bit of night nurse, and then uh, I should feel a bit better. I see Slick joining now. He's connected, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get him in. There he is. Yeah. There we go. Welcome, Slick. Welcome to the Brothers Geek Out podcast, bro. How's it going? I am late. Yeah, man. I'm um, I'm uh, I'm good. I'm just like decompressing, I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah, as you guys can see, Slick in his is in his London location. Uh, he's made it back to Thailand, man. How was the How was the trip over? You know, like I had this whole like genius plan that I was gonna knock a few back and and like like what I did the. Uh, going out and basically tranquilize myself to, and to sleep through the 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 time dysfunction that happens and I you know I I didn't need to do that I slept a little bit and I've been all right man like you know, the, the longest part of the, the situation because it felt really fast going backwards the longest part of the whole situation was just getting the luggage that was like that felt like it was forever but the mm. rest of it was quite smooth they fed us real well um I spoke to the person who came to sit next to me because I, I sat in, in the window uh they broke the ice they were like we kind of had the same pants and she was like nice pants and made a little chit chat here and there and she told me about some really interesting places in Bali that I should go to and I was like cool so um yeah man it was actually quite nice getting back you know I I, I knew I was in London immediately when I I just felt the energy man straight away like that and the temperature mm. <laughs> the people and I was like yeah I'm like but um but yeah I'm, i know you know, exactly that feeling <laughs> i know exactly that feeling every time i come back every time i come back home listen london's home and i'm biased it's always home for life but i know that feeling uh and that energy that you're talking about yeah but um but that was it man like i came back and are you feeling like withdrawal syndromes and whatnot you know just that that feeling of like man like it went so it felt like it went so quick you know, guys, if you haven't seen it, check out Fight Talk for the last couple of weeks. K West does, we, we kind of documented, you know, on a weekly basis, uh, your Thailand trip. So if you, if you want to see it, do check out the first, just the first bit of every one of the Fight Talks that came out. Um, but do you feel a bit, you know, un, um, you're withdrawn and what's the word, like holiday blue? It's not really a holiday, but the blues syndrome or whatever. Um, nah, because <clears throat> I'm going back as soon as I make it work for myself. So at some point I remember being out there and like 
and then my friend saying to me like are you gonna are you gonna are you, are you gonna miss this you know because I kind of had this like longing stare at the beach but I was I was just thinking about like uh just affirmations basically in my head and she was like you know are you gonna miss it and I was like no no because I'm coming back soon if I'm not gonna come back I'm gonna miss this because it's like it's gonna be a long time and I don't plan it to be a long time and it won't be a long time you know so I'm I'm gonna make sure that 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 I don't need to miss anything, you know, because it's it's not going to be that long to wait. Yeah, I get you. So it's just like you're going home, London, just to see family, spend birthday with mom, and then you're going back. It's like me coming home for a month, and then, like, I wouldn't say I miss I miss London more than I miss my life here, only because family's in London. So, but yeah, I I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Basically, in short, I'd make I'd make uh, coming to London a holiday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's- Have you booked a ticket yet, or you just what you just got back, but have you booked any tickets yet? Or no, I I need to I need I need to. Uh, by the way, like anyone who's listening to our audience, if you know any online solutions um, for work, I'm trying to be like trying to trying to do a digital nomad situation here. So uh, I do have a TEFL course. You know what that is? Teaching English as a foreign language. Okay. Um, so I have that. So I've been trying to leverage that. If anybody knows any any like sure links that I can use to, to get a, get a job online, uh, you know, whether it's like admin, something simple and basic, <laughs> you know, like I have a lot of skills, but you know, I just need something where I can just, you know, consistent money coming in because the pound goes longer, dollar goes longer, mm. you know, and you're talking about a job in Thailand. You, you're talking about something over there or you're talking about doing it while you're here in London now. I'm talking about something that's remote. Okay, something okay. that I can just like do on my laptop, basically. Got it, like got it, got so it. that while while I build what I'm building there, business and everything in a brand, I'm still making like pounds or dollars through this way, you know? Mm, mm, I can mm, still mm. work here and make my butt here and there, but at least I've got like a lot behind me, you know? Um so that's what that's what I'm looking for at the moment. I'm actually I came back and I've just been applying for like the past two days for like remote jobs, for TEFL course, for this, for that. Um you know, remote based. So that's okay, kind of yeah. where. What about um, um your place was on Airbnb? Is that still happening as well? Or can that happen while you're out there as well? Like you just kind of, I don't know, I manage it. It would, but um, the situation has changed here. Um, so I won't be staying here any longer anyway. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Cool because the timing works uh so well because it was like okay, well, I already decided that I was going to do this way back when and that was that and that was like with more assurances of what was going on with this place uh and then you know covid happened and 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 life changed uh no life didn't change just the environment changed but my it kind of added to my like my my sphere was even more sharpened to get to its destination and hit that fucking bullseye you know and uh and then through all of that you know i just it it just propelled me to just to, to get this done you know get this whole thing moving um, nice so, nice well yeah. it's good to see man it's good to, i mean look you know like i said followed your journey <coughs> excuse me followed your journey throughout um and it's great to see like you said you made some moves out there you got you you, you went out there and achieved probably overachieved what you what you were expecting anyway um and now you're just going to keep moving yeah you're going to keep that momentum going um which is awesome i um I'll just tell you, just before you jump on, I'll just say it. I'm just a bit under the weather and whatnot. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. just we'll keep, keep these on short and sweet this week. But yeah, this week was like, even for me, like training, like this week was a hard week in the sense, like training for some reason. It was like my first week proper back at training since Ramadan <clears throat> and then since my sister came and whatnot. Um, and this whole week, I was sparring. I, I, I don't go to the sparring classes specifically when I don't want to oh. spar. And then Monday went in, wrestling happened to be sparring. So 45 minutes, you're just getting smashed. Well, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, my thoughts were messed up. These big dudes obviously went a bit easy, thank God. Um, but people my size, yeah, it was a really, it was fun. But you don't come out of there without any bumps and bruises. There's always sort of bumps and bruises. And then I go to MMA the next day thinking, all right, this should be just drilling. Cool. Wrestling spine was good. My body's a bit busted, but just do some drills. It's fine. Nope. MMA, bombardment sparring boxing kickboxing and kickboxing with takedowns i'm like what, what how why why today why today so anyway 
got through Tuesday session. Wednesday was BJJ, always sparring involved in that. It was a good session. I'm having some good tasks. Good compared to you know what I was saying before. You know, I'm having a lot more better uh, time with jujitsu and whatnot. Still, always the nerve wracking one, but I'm having better time just because I think there's like I'm just I think the wrestling's helping. Pull it that way. That's helping. And then Thursday was boxing, and that's Thursday boxing is always sparring. But the coach I said is uh, I've said this before is a brilliant coach, and he he makes sure before we start sparring, check your mm -hmm. egos, especially yeah. recently one of his students passed away because um it well, it was during a fight he got hit in the back of the head a few times he won that fight actually but later on passed away it's a horrible thing that's why got to respect anyone that ever gets in 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 the ring and whatnot so it's a horrible thing but he goes like this is sparring so check your egos here you know what i mean uh, and just learn from each other so that was you know a little bit of a, a heart heartbreaking story for him and whatnot but boxing was fun so that, anyway in regards to training it was just a hard week and then work was also a hard week anyway but then get, guess who i saw and he's training in the gym all week and i and i, I wish Ooh. i could try to get to meet him in person was comes up to my um mr smash is, is at the gym, uh this week i saw it i was i was it was on it was on wednesday night i was just warming up for jujitsu in the gym area i see my mma mma coach and i kind of like just looked in that direction and I just see yeah. this big dude in a big beard and I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, that sounds like Chamayev, bro. And I'm a bit starstruck, uh, but I'm not going to be that guy that runs up to him. He's oh, can I get a picture? I'm not that guy. He was, they were ready to go outside for training. Or yeah, so I was just kind of like, you know, a bit starstruck looking uh, and I'm like, I can't believe Hamza Chamayev is here. He's been training there the whole week. Maybe he's there this week. I can, if, if I feel better, I'm going to go into training. Uh, oh, week. he's there then. He's there. I don't know if he's doing camp or whatnot, but he's staying there for a while uh, and he's just training. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so hopefully I see him this week if I go back to training. I'm not going to train if I'm not feeling better by tomorrow. But yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. Um, um, you managed to um, uh, get, any, get any lemon and ginger and all that stuff to clear your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, ta I'm taking all that stuff. Uh, lemon and ginger and I had a coffee earlier on with a bit of turmeric and ginger and stuff but right. yeah it's just one of those I, I rarely get sick honestly mm -hmm. um, and you know I'm better than you did on, earlier on the phone yeah so. I mean <clears throat> my, my phone's all messed up and my nose is all clogged and I just feel like my back you know the body pains you start getting I'm feeling it on my back and whatnot um, okay. I rarely get sick I, I think what happened like I said something compromised my immune system on Friday night I'm assuming it was that ice cream I had I don't know and then just something ice cream so maybe get, get your ass in the sauna man or a steam room or a herbal you know what I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah I don't have any of that around me the sauna or steam room but normally back in the days I would train like I used to be like fuck it man I'm young I'm a train let's sweat this out not anymore not now when my body's Feeling like this now. I'm older now. I'm gonna be smarter. Sleep and rest is the best. Is the best cure to okay. these things. But anyway, okay. saying that, guys, let's 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 do this episode of of the Brothers Geek Out podcast. I've got some news here. We'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, and then do check out Fight Talk. Me and K West are gonna catch up also about Fight Talk, uh, and we'll keep that short and sweet. Uh, just because I'm not feeling well, but we will give our thoughts on the fight. So do check that out. That video should be up as well by the time you're watching this but let's do this bro i got some <clears throat> i got some news and some stuff i've been watching and uh again like we did last week bro I'll just go through it and we uh get your thoughts on it as well so i don't know if you got any chance to catch any movies but i thought i caught a couple this week um did you see any movies on the plane on your on the way is there anything that you saw that you want to um, oh it doesn't matter evil dead rises how was that any good that was i mean I, i'm a massive horror fan so I fucking love that shit, man. And I waited 10 years for the sequel, you know, and it was worth it. Uh, I remember watching that in, in New York, actually. I was, uh, yeah, knocking around in Old Town. And um, yeah, I caught the movie with, with, with uh, I didn't even know how to explain who, who what this girl was. It was almost like a star-crossed lover situation, you know, like, met but couldn't be together and then yeah so anyway um saw the movie a long time ago loved it and waited all this time for the sequel and i i, I can't wait for the next one okay also I, i'm not a no, massive, it's too fucking long yeah i'm not a massive horror guy so it's not something that i'll probably watch i remember watching evil dead 2 years ago when we were kids and it, we actually watched it um 
out of comedy in the sense that me and my brother and my cousins uh, and whatnot, we would just sit there and watch it. And I don't know, certain scenes made us laugh, but it was like, we'll watch it together because, you know, it's a horror movie and whatnot and we're together. Um, but I don't I don't really watch those those horror movies, but so it was a Sam Remy. Did he, did he, was it him that directed this? No, it was another guy actually. Um, uh, not the guy's name, but I know obviously he probably would have been executive producing or something like that. Yeah, because it's his classic, right? With with uh, uh, what's his name? Bruce Campbell. Like, Bruce Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Lee Cronin. Lee Cronin is is a director of it. Uh, he's an Irish filmmaker, and he's done The Hole in the Ground, another horror movie. Ghost Train. I don't know. Minutes Past Midnight. Don't know. I don't know his movies, but I do now, or I will. I, I will want to. You know? Okay. Actually, I know the hole in the ground. That's a fucked up movie. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm not gonna say if I'm gonna watch it just because it's a horror movie and it's not. I guess there's so much. There's so much things to watch. But um, yeah, I watch. I watch a few. I watch Air. Did you have you seen Air? The one about Michael Jordan, the where Air Jordans with Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. Uh, Chris Tucker. Is it worth it? And oh, beyond the day, really good. Like them guys. When, when, in my opinion, when Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, when them guys put a movie together, like they, they, they vibe off each other so well. And there's something about those movies, be it the dialogue, the cinematography, whatever it is. It's just for me, like I'm in straight away. I'm just captivated, right? Uh, I just like the way them guys shoot films and whatnot. Anyway, this tells a story of how Air Jordan came along with Nike and whatnot. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% accurate, but I'm sure it's as accurate as they could. Then they probably holly hollyfied it or Hollywood fired it a bit. But uh, it was it was a great sort of, um, I guess, intense sort of story on how Nike got uh, Michael Jordan on board to do Air Jordan, the Air Jordan, and it became obviously one of the most successful, was it like, how do you call it, sports figure clothing thing, where I'm going to have to pull it in the right words, but of all time. And, and he revolutioned, not Michael Jordan, not only being... And I don't know shit about basketball, but not only being the greatest basketball player of all time, I think he revolutionized um, um, sponsor sponsorship clothing or whatever because he wanted a piece of the pie. It wasn't just it wasn't just you're going to give me contract and shoes to wear. I want a, a piece of every shoe you sell, and it happened to I think the first year they happened to sell 104 million units or something like that. And I think to this day the Air Jordan brand is like a four billion dollar brand to the company. Um, and Michael Jordan obviously makes a cut out of that and it revolutionized Nike because Nike at that time in the 80s was not the pinnacle of, of sportswear or whatnot, right? Yeah. It was Adidas. Adidas were killing it. One DMC made some tunes and all this stuff. Um, Converse was second and then it was Filler. Nike. Filler as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the big three that they mentioned in the movie was those those three. Uh, oh, yeah. Adidas, uh, Adidas, Converse and then Nike. Uh, and yeah. Nike was known for its running shoes. So that's what they kind of owned. And Adidas right. was smashing it with basketball, but they also had like hip hop, Run DMC making tunes. Yeah. Converse was good out there. Tennis. Yeah, exactly. So then what happened was after they got Michael, Michael Jordan and they gave him, not, not only did they give him the deal, it was like the trainer itself. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't just like, it, 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 how did they pull it, man? It was kind of like the, the trainer is a trainer. Or, or the sneakers in the street is the individual in the sneaker, and they kind of, they kind of put, proposed it in a way to him that you are the trainer. This is not almost like it's not Nike. It's it's Air Jordan. It is Air you. Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something. Whereas yeah. Yeah. the other ones were like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you the trainers and and it has whatever. You gotta watch the movie. It's really good. It's put, and what they did the nostalgia of the eighties. They really kind of emphasized on that in the sense like there were so many different brands that they emphasized in the eighties. There was a phone in a car that they were excited about. Like it, it they, the nostalgia of the eighties mm. at that time was uh, it was pretty good. But um, really good watch. Very good watch. And by the end of it, you're just like, you know, it's amazing how it worked out. Um, and then you just see the story of it, and then also, um, you know, I, I again, I don't know what's what you're gonna research on what's real and what's not, but uh, it was Michael Jordan's was it one of his coaches or something like that? I can't remember. One of the Olympic coaches back in the days was who actually convinced him to go with Nike, Nike, and that just elevated after that, you know, just elevated. And Michael Jordan's mom played a big part of it, and again, I hopefully this is real. Uh, she played a big part of it, like her, his dad was this jolly dude and whatnot his mom was all business and his mom was the one that was like a very smart intelligent woman was like you know my son is the athlete and he should get a piece of the pie 
Uh, she was very, a very smart individual. Great movie. I recommend the watch. Okay, I'll have a look at that. Um, it is my list of things to, things to watch as well. But one thing I I, I thought I'd I'd say, which um Michael Jordan said himself, um when you called him the greatest of all time, and like he basically said that he didn't play against people like uh Ab Abdul Kareem Jabbar. Walt Chamberlain and all of that, and in each generation they were the best of all time. So how can I call myself the best of all time? Because I didn't face the best of every generation. And I thought, you know, we we speak about, I mean, MMA wise, speak about it all the time about like that same term, but it's just, it, it's the same across any sport, right? Like they're just the best of that era. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's how I see it. And well, really humble, that, man. Sport, that's brilliant, man, that he said that. You know? Yeah, could, he considering he's he was such a competitor, and, and and if you see that Netflix thing, the Michael Jordan one, you could see like he was such a competitor, he was almost like a dick. But for him to say that is very humble, man. But it's very true. It's it's very true. However, mm -hmm. you think with basketball is a bit different than MMA. Because if you said oh, yeah, in 1993, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoist Gracie was the greatest full time, no doubt about it. And then during that time, after you got him, um, uh, his, you know, Hendo Gracie and then um, Hicks and Gracie, one of the greatest full times. However, if you put it's John funny. Jones in there now, yeah. it's a big, you know, or welterweight fighting. Yeah. It's different. But yeah, no, I mean, Habib also said this once as well, like when people used to refer to him as a music guy. No, 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 no. I'm on the same level with, I'm in this new category with these guys, the greatest of all time. And, it depends, mm. and, and, and GSP said it as well, like, depending on the time, I'm the mm. best at that time, but we're on one level. And, you know, mm. John Jones is known as one of the greatest. There's going to be some superstar out there that will be, you know, known as the greatest. So definitely, um, you know, that conversation is, is, is uh, it's not That's as, a wild one. yeah, it's not as, as, as clear cut. I mean, with boxing, and I'm being biased here, Again, if you the greatest of all time, obviously Muhammad Ali. Was he the one that came out with that that whole thing? Maybe I don't know. Um, the reason why they put him up there is what he did inside and outside the ring, and he actually sits on the pedestal on what he did inside and outside the ring. So it's kind of unique in that sense. But that's me being biased yeah. towards that. Yeah, I I hear, I hear what you're saying. I remember like you know you can break it down even further if you want to get super anal and be like you know the. The great the the greatest wrestler in 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 MMA, arguably Khabib, you know, like, and then you could put it that, like the person with the best bo boxing in MMA is this person and that, like, so you could keep yeah. breaking all these things down. It's it's a rabbit hole. In <laughs> it's a yeah, it's it's completely it's, it's a, a rabbit hole. You go down. It's fun. Yeah, but it's long. <laughs> yeah. Mo moving on, I watched uh, yeah. and I'm gonna finish off in a bit. So, yeah. Still, Michael J. Fox movie just was released on Apple Apple News, and it's just oh. a movie, a little bit about like almost like a documentary type about his his life, uh, yeah. and then you know the moment when you know he caught Parkinson's and how he kind of dealt with that, and how, how he tried to hide it, uh, hide it. Sorry, while he was filming and being successful and whatnot, and then after he came out with with it, and how mm. he tried to move. But I haven't finished. I've got last twenty minutes left. It's such an inspiring, like emotional sort of journey man i mean he he was on top of the world after back to the future i mean you've got this young good looking kid back to the future yeah. was a hit and yeah. and then you know he he talks about how it almost i guess because it almost came crashing down because of parkinson but the fact that he he was kind of willing to fight on and whatnot and mm. still trying to fight on considering he's dropped so many times broken this broken that but just keeps on walking he's a true inspiration man michael j fox i, I really feel Kibler is a huge fan, as as people know. Kibler got really emotional watching that, uh, and really? I can understand why. Yeah, I can understand why, and, and, and you could just see, you could just see, you know, the guy's in constant pain. You know, he says it. He goes, "I'm in pain all the time," but I don't, I don't lead off with that. I don't start off with that. Like the guy was, the guy who was interviewing him, because there was a moment in the documentary he was like, "I need my pills. Um, can we stop for a little bit?" And then the guy was like, are you in pain? He goes, I'm always in pain. He goes, why are you saying it? Because I'm not going to lead with that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lead up with that. But right now, I just need my pills. Um, it's emotional, man. And I find him very inspirational because people could give up. And, you know, he, he Muhammad Ali had Parkinson's. And even though he tried, I mean, obviously, he couldn't box and whatnot. But he he tried to do a lot of humanitarian stuff while, as he had Parkinson's. These people are amazing, you know, even though life could come crashing down as it does they still try to move forward and i and i really respect that about him so that's another one i recommend watching 
I don't know. I don't know if I can watch that, man. It's hard, man. That's hard because, like, you know, like it's it's yeah, hard. But I will like I, I will mention like uh, like I never seen Back to the Future. You know that, yeah. <laughs> but I, I know. But <laughs> but I know. I know. I know. Point. Please point. Please wave. Yeah, go on. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Give give me a uh, Habib a uh, Habib cuss down for that one. Cuss me, cuss me, go on, please. Come on, brother. Cuss me, cuss me. Come on, brother. brother. <laughs> you, you must watch this movie. Must what you watch? Must watch this movie before you come back on the Brothers Geek Out podcast. <laughs> Why you smash you, brother? <laughs> you need to watch that, bro. It's such a. I mean, look, you don't need to watch it. Actually, no, you don't need to watch it. I mean, but if you if you ever feel like you want to check it out, like and what see what the hype's about, you might not even like it. You never know. It was just at the time, just a great, just a great movie. Like you, yeah, I can't explain. Yeah, I, like, it's very iconic. Yeah, I know so many like uh, homages to that. Like, and I know where it's from. I just haven't, I haven't seen all of the content. But I, the thing is, anyway, I'm not gonna get into all that. But you know, great movie. Uh, my point was one of my my favorite memories of of him um, was watching uh, The Good Wife, and um, I don't know if you've seen that. You've seen that? It's a, it's a court case drama. Mm. Uh, anyway, very good show. The, um, that's where Luke Cage came from. Uh, what's his name? Uh, John, is it Col- Coulter? Um, you know the actor. Yeah, he yeah, came yeah. From there. He was called Bishop. He was like a, a mob boss guy. Always wore a suit, real slick. You know, like like Fifty Cent in a sense. You know, like got like it's like shady business, but you can <sighs> see a suit. You know, um, Lamont Bishop was his name. Yeah, dope. Anyway, my man, um, my man, um, Dr. J Fox came and he was a lawyer, right? And he had this big name about him. But the main character hadn't met him before. So she didn't know what to expect, right? So she's outside the courtroom, yeah? <laughs> and she's late for her uh, this um, uh, like a court case. And then this guy, Michael J. Fox, comes and he drops something. And you see him kind of struggling. So he's using his illness in every day in, in, in the show. She helps him and she ends up being late, right? And he ends up going ahead. Anyway, I think his, his name was Channing, I think. His name was Channing. Yes, She knew his name. So she goes to the court case late or flustered and he's there, her enemy, the defense. And she uh, looks at him like, this motherfucker, <laughs> he, he, just <laughs> used, he used like, you know, that the sympathy vote, you know, he was slick. And I remember he'll be in court and someone will be like pr- um, proposing their case and whatever, you know, giving their thing. <clears throat> and he'd be there and he'd be like, drop something. And then they come, it throws them off. And I was like, oh my God, this guy, he's, he's doing this. Like, and it, you know, I thought that he embraced it beautifully. Yeah. Well, it's amazing that you wow. said it because that's exactly what he says. Like, he, he yeah. had to, he had to embrace it. He had to. And he there was some role. believe it. There was that show, I can't remember what it was called, man. There was one show, it's a comedy one about hospital guys. I really can't remember what it was called. But anyway. Oh, and- he was in it, right? Yes, yeah. They, 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 he literally played a doctor with Parkinson's and whatnot. It was a comedy yes. sketch. And yes. He, yeah, and it's amazing that, you know, obviously it's a serious thing, but he he embraced yes. it and he, he he tried to move on and didn't take it. Powerful. When I say didn't take it serious, meaning that he tried to, like, didn't try, he didn't want the sympathy people. Like, all right, this is what yes. it is. Yes. I'm yes. going to do yes. it. Yes. So while he, while, before he announced it, you know, his left arm kept him moving. So while he was filming, whatever he was filming at the time, it was, Man, I'm going blank on the shows. Maybe it's my brain or I'm not feeling well. But anyway, he would just keep something in his left hand all the time, be it a pen, be it a phone, be it whatever. His left hand was always occupied with an object, so you, you would not notice that his hand is actually moving or whatnot. Um, mm. Actually, it, it, it's inspiring. I, I, I love the guy for bits. I think, I think he's amazing and uh, definitely something worth watching uh, if you've got the time. Um, I think I'm, I'm gonna go and watch some watch some of his movies for homage sake as well because um do Back to the Future, bro. If you're gonna do that, do Back to the Future. Cool. Do Back to the Future. Exactly. All right, cool. Uh, I watched <laughs> another movie. I watched. It was a bit of, on a bit of a, a lighter note and a bit of a comedy note. Renfield, which was Nicolas Cage's new movie with uh, him playing Count Dracula, and mm. uh, what's the guy? I can't remember the guy's name, but he uh, he plays his. Um, assistant in it i guess and he gets these special powers by eating bugs anyway it's just like a relationship <laughs> with, it's, it's just basically a comedy basically a relationship with his boss who he wants to get out of and um you know he's to kind of he would feed he would bring people for his boss to feed but i think eventually he didn't like the relationship he had with his boss who was count dracula and it was just a comedy around that and whatnot anyway mm-hmm. just an easy watch um, i heard it was meant to be part of um like it was meant to somewhat resemble uh, the famous Nosferatu, 
That was the idea, wasn't it? Somewhere. He looks a bit like that, yes. I mean, Nicolas Cage looks a bit like that, yeah. Yeah, like, like I had... Like back hair, long, sort of... Yeah. The teeth, yeah. all of them were all fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 when I first heard about this idea, I was thinking to myself, they're going to go, like, full, like, Bram Stoker with it, and it's going to be some dark shit. Like, it's going to be... It was violent yeah. and gory. I thought it was gonna be like that, but like it's like the, the original Nosferatu, but with you know different effects and so on. It's gonna be like scary. I was hoping it was gonna be something like that that people see as like a whoa. Yeah, I mean, if you try to, co- I mean, look, I haven't seen the that original one to to say, but I know that's one of the the, the best and classic, like most scary one. I if, if you, I guess if you tried to imitate something like that, it it would completely go wrong. Um, in the sense that you you can't you can't. I don't know. You know how it is with remakes and whatnot. But I guess the, his style of vampire looked the same. Yeah, it was very, that, yeah, yeah. It was a bit more like I said, comedy, and it was very, very gory. I'm talking about arms and bodies being split in two and all that sort of stuff. But it wasn't as um, uh, intense as as Probably that. Which was not very good about it as well. Which is no, nah, I wouldn't say it was a great movie. I mean, no, no. It's just an easy watch. You could just put on a Saturday night or Friday night just to leave it on or whatever. Um, uh, that's what I said to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to some news and stuff. So, keeping uh, let's start off with some Marvel themes. So, Guardians of the Galaxy three, which I do want to watch again. Oh shit. But um, uh, it's doing it's still doing great in the box office. James Gunn is smashing it, but he has confirmed that someone or members of the Guardians of the Galaxy will feature in the new Superman Legacy that he's going to be doing. Um, I saw some shit where people would be like, no, they go to sick to Marvel and all this sort of, sort of controversy. I'm like, no, they don't. They're an actor. They could go to Marvel, DC, make a film about whatever they want. Like, let them do what they want. There's no commitment for, for Star Lord or Drax or whoever to stay in Marvel. No, yeah. they're done. Um, but I, I what I love about James Gunn was even though, and I'm sure he was doing in the talks of of being the uh the you know in charge of the new DC universe and whatnot, but he yes. still put his best efforts into the MCU. There was none of that co- you know competition. Yeah, yeah. He made uh-huh. a great movie of Guardians of the Galaxy, and if he wants to take some people over, and and he, they do generally do. I've seen that he already crosses people over in and, and uses the same people in his movies. But yeah, we might see some Guardians of the Galaxy member in in, in the DC universe and in and and in the Superman movie. So. I think that's awesome. Whatever you could do, I said do it because he's an amazing. I think he's an amazing filmmaker, and I really, after watching his movies, I I really feel confident about the DC universe, and I feel confident that he's gonna put something great together for us. I think so too. I really do. Um, I mean, they picked the right guy. You know, they picked the right guy for the job. He's doing the job. I think these people who are critiquing critiquing if the actor plays this or that, like, it's irrelevant, man. Like. We are not even. We shouldn't even be seeing the actor playing this person. We should see the character from the comic book. Forget that. That's what we want to see. Yeah. You know. So uh, you know, people just just like enjoy enjoy the art of acting. You know, enjoy. Uh, you know, Chris Hemworth being one character, like poor from one side, and then all of a sudden he's like, I don't know, like Lobo or some shit. You know. <laughs> And 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 how he rips the the character from the pages and puts it into life, like and we're in, we embrace it. That's what all that matters. With yeah, life. you so, know, agreed. They're actors. They're supposed to act and play that character. That character. No, they have the like, right to go do whatever they want. But no, I think yeah. at some point there was a there was a there was a restriction with some characters <laughs> way back. No? No, I'm sure Marvel has it in their contract saying while you're with us for the next 10 years or whatever, you, you, you've got to commit to this character. Maybe they might say you can't play a DC character, but they can still act in other stuff, but you're with us for 10 years. I don't even think Marvel would even have that in their, in their thing. Like, they just got a 10-year, you know, um, like whatever, 10-year contract or whatever, and that's it. After that, you do what you want. That's a that's a great that's a great statue you've got there, Bruce, man, over your right shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a new one. Bro. Well, not um, new, it's that- old. Yeah, it's it's old. I mean, the figure's old. It's, I think it came out back in 2011. It's new for me. I I, I got it recently. Because I saw your, your box of the... Did it come in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, ooh. This is like 2011 Hot Toys. And they were much better quality back then than they are now. And the articulation, the clothes, the features, yeah. everything's just awesome. I mean, that is one of the best 
like the way I was able to position him, like it's hard to do that with the figures these days. And I, I Hot Toys have lost that that quality. But with that old figure, the articulation is amazing. But uh, yeah, no, I done a guys check out a uh, I done on the Brothers Geek Out channel. I done a product review for this. The amount of accessories and everything this comes with this product. Do check out that video. It's on the channel. But yeah, I'm glad you kind of noticed that. Um, and and on that note, this is this is Forest Law from Tekken. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moving I, on, I used to break that game down too. <laughs> oh yeah, me too, bro. And I'm waiting for Tekken Eight. I mean, I lost a little bit of interest in, with Tekken Seven. seven. I it was six, seven. Oh. I didn't really get into it, and I didn't really like um six storyline. Six I, is when I started losing a little bit, and then seven yeah. I I didn't really I played seven. it once or twice. I never even clocked it or done anything yeah. with it. But hey, I'm looking forward to get back into it. So let's see, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing your review on that. Yeah, I did. What I did like about seven's gameplay was I didn't like when you when you when you, when you're beating someone. And then when their energy is low, they get this special power thing, and you just press two yeah. buttons, and they do this yeah. big combo or whatever. And I was like, yeah, nah, nah. "That's shit. That's shit. I could be smashing <laughs> you. I could be, in my opinion, that's shit. Like I could be smashing you the way I, I should be, and then what? You just get this lucky move on me, and you win. That's rubbish. So I was like, "This is shit." Like what I loved about Tekken was the martial arts. I always loved Tekken for the martial arts. Um. But that was rubbish, in my opinion. So hopefully, I don't know if they still got it in Tekken 8. Hopefully, they get rid of that because I thought that was shit. Because I'll be, I'll be playing some dudes and whatnot, and I'll be smashing them with law or whatever. And then their energy gets low. They get this little power up thing, and then they get the move on me. Luckily, and then that's it. They 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 have a chance to win. I'm like, that's this is shit. It doesn't display the skills <laughs> of. I know it's a video game, but it still doesn't display the skills of a, of a, you know martial arts or whatever. I don't know. Getting too much into it. <laughs> So for me, Tekken 7 was basic. I will see what Tekken 8, Tekken 8 is about. Oh my God. You know what? I've, I've never seen you in, in any other gear but neutral in regards to your temperament. <laughs> and it's the first time you're talking about that, I'm like, this guy got hurt. Somebody fucked him up. No, Somebody I actually, no, no one fucked me up because I didn't, one, I didn't play the game much. And two, it was Namco that fucked me up because they don't want to make the game like that. But when I was playing it with friends in Hong Kong, I would beat them. But yeah. that when little that thing, happened. Namco fucked me up and I just didn't play yeah. it. I'm not playing this. This is happen. rubbish. You lost me. That's you what lost I'm saying. Me. Like yeah. somebody fucking you would like I could feel like it was personal. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, because bro, I, I played Tekken. I was so into Tekken and I don't have the time for this anymore. But I would learn, I try to learn every single move in their command list. And then I'll go on YouTube and I'll try and learn um, combos that people do and I try and memorize those and do those and shit. I was well into it. But it was yeah. like now you don't really need that. All you need is good timing. And if you can just time that special move, you're good to go. And I was just like, that just ruins the game. So yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. So I never played yeah. that, but Tekken 8 looks great. So I'm 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 gonna get into that. I've done actually we got the Brothers Geek Out channel. I've done a reaction to one of Law's videos. I'm trying to do more, I just haven't had the time, but um one of Law's uh videos that came out. So check that gaming channel out. It's a bit slow, but hopefully I'll get some momentum one day to get on it. Yeah, man, make it happen. I feel like after we have all this chat, I'm gonna definitely play Tekken. Thank you. Yeah, man, get into it. Um, <laughs> all right, moving on, moving on, skipping with Marvel. Venom 3 has officially started filming. Um, oh, Jesus. So I'm looking forward to that. I know one and two, you know, Tom Hardy's amazing. Two was great because of the multiverse. You know, he kind of went over to... Um, two was... Okay, look, they had the opportunity to smash it and do some great things with Carnage. It didn't go as, as well as I wanted it to be. But Me too. saying that, you know, at the end, he did go into Spider-Man No Way Home. As the multiverse thing, hopefully that opens up the doors to something they could do for this one. Bring in Andrew Garfield, Spider Man, whatever. Make this one. Mm -hmm. They they have an opportunity to do something great with this, so hopefully they do. Tom Hardy's I think is awesome. Um, yeah. you know he's just such a good actor. Like 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 they've got to be something good with this. So I, I really I I wish they bring a Spider Man in this, and if they do an Andrew Garfield one, that'd be amazing. Um, that would you know that'd be his venom. That'd be sick. So. Anyway, they're making it. We'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to. I'll watch it regardless of how the other ones are. I'll still watch it. Yeah, I I, I feel like um <sighs> yeah, if, if they get the Andrew Garfield one and then we get to see what what that line meant when he was just like that he he crossed the line or you know that line he has in the in the what's the movie Far From Home? No, 
No way yeah. home. No way home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that, that comment that he that Garfield makes about like, you know, crossing the line, you know, I, I, hopefully we can, if it is him, we get to find out what that meant. Yeah, okay, okay. I hope so. I hope so. I think there's still potential there. And based on what the fans want, I think I think having an Andrew Garfield Spider Man would just, in that movie, will make it great. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. Um, Mr. John Bethnal, who's the Punisher. He started doing weapons training now. Oh. I mean, he, he's, you know, he's taking that role serious and I love that about him. He is the, my favourite Punisher, even though I love all of them and obviously I'm Punisher biased with all of them, so I love all of them anyway. But just seeing him on that tactical, doing the tactical shooting oh. and just really training for the role, I love it. I can't wait to see John Bethel's Punisher in, in the new Daredevil. I heard because of the... Uh, the writer, the writer strike in Hollywood right now. That shows on whole and as many as well as many other shows out there. But um, what you call it? I'm just happy that he's training for it because, you know, yes, he's a savage, and I still want to see Punisher do some savage shit and some like commando shit and Rambo shit with a with a yeah, but with exactly and with a chain gun or whatever. But what I would love to also see is him do some of that John Wick shit, like tactical shooting, and which he did a little bit in his Punisher show, which is awesome. I just want to see more of that because that'd be amazing. Um, I want to see a skillful Punisher as and, and a tactical Punisher as well as the savage Punisher. You know, what I mean, there's so much to him um, yeah. as that character because you know when he needs to be a savage, he's a savage, and when he needs to be strategic. He's still a savage, but he's strategic. People like, you know, you got to see that in him. That's why he's able to, in the comics, and again, I know it's not a real guy, but in the comics, he's been able to not beat, but he's been able to survive, you know, fighting superheroes, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, be it the yeah. Defenders, be it the Avengers, stuff like that. Yeah, Just man. using his strategic military mind and whatnot. He is like Deathstroke, isn't he? You can say kind of like that, a little bit. I mean, just the fact that he's he's human, right? He's obviously got the the, the Mirakuru within his body, so he can heal and all that shit. But his skill level is so high that he can deal with. He can he can like Batman. Batman can fight Batman. with like. I think Batman's yeah, a better compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because yeah, because Punisher like he Batman has many powers. Punisher does. That's why I put them two together. What's that? Sorry. Um, Punisher kills right, and so does Deathstroke, right? So. You know, the brutality is only so far yeah. with Batman. No? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I mean, you could say Daredevil and Batman, I guess, are the same because they have that ethics of not killing. Um, but yeah, I mean, Punisher, you know, he's got that. He's got his motto, man. Like when, when I hit them, they stay down. Like they, they that the the crime ends right here. There's no chance of you getting out of prison and hurting anyone else. That's his motto. Whatever. Listen, guys, I'm not a psycho. I know I'm a Punisher fan. I don't believe in murdering, but I don't know. We all watched, like I said, John Wick. <laughs> was amazing. And he was a mass murderer killing bad people. Anyway. Vigilanteism. Um, what's that? Vigilanteism. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Like, Listen, man, I, I enjoy Pun Punisher's got no special powers, but like he's military strategic. He the PTSD that he's got of his family being killed and military and whatnot gives him this sense of not feeling to get through pain basically he's got this ability to get through pain that not much humans can go through pull it that way that's what his kind of superpower is to to tolerate the pain and that's the pain of hurt of losing his family and everything that gets him through it but john bethel is awesome he's a wicked actor in general and i just can't wait to see i just can't wait to see it back on the screen so looking forward john to that bethel. john uh, yeah i mean uh you should be john bethel reminds me of like a like a like a, a version of stallone yeah, yeah, kind of in a sense. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. reminds me of that. Like he's like the this 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 era is kind of Stallone, you know. Um, but but yeah. like Stallone's great. Listen, because people try to say Stallone's not a great actor. Go watch Rocky and tell me if that's not great acting or not, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. But yeah, I, I think John Bethnal is a, a, a lot more of a versatile actor. I was gonna but, add that yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, but I just mean in terms of like bringing that macho. To the to, to the scene like that you know like his punisher you know his his cry his war cries reminds me of stallone you know <gasps> but, i mean his ones are a little bit more different but you know just like out here yelling no, shit, like, no, 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 no. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not as far as that but you know he just reminds me of the only other guy that's quite ripped in shape 
got the guns and whatnot and out here yelling and screaming and shit and going crazy. Like, so Stallone used to, you know, it's, it's that part of it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, John Breffnall is a way more diverse actor than Stallone. 100%. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm super looking forward to it, man. Um, yeah, obviously, because I'm the Punisher guy. Um, sticking on with Disney real quick. Oh, sorry, did you ask me a question? No, I was just saying, like, I'll definitely fuck with that show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt, no doubt. Um, Disney Plus <clears throat> lost 4 million subscribers. So they've been on a bit of a loss for the last, I think they lost a bunch of subscribers last month or whatnot, last quarter, and now they lost more, and I think it's about coming up to 4 million. Um, I don't know if that's got to do with content um, or whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting thing that Disney's going through. I don't know if it's like, I didn't read much about it. I just read more about the loss or whatnot, but it's interesting that they lost Ooh. that many subscribers because they're number two after Netflix. Uh, it's, and their growth was amazing. Like Disney Plus's growth just shot up amazingly to that number two spot, I believe. Considering Ooh. they didn't have any new content at the time, you know, they were just growing with the Marvel stuff and the Dis and the Star Wars stuff and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And then obviously their, their catalogue of, of Disney and then they purchased Fox and Hulu and all that sort of, is it Hulu? Yeah, all of that sort of stuff. Oh, did they? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they purchased Fox and then they they then they had the, because Fox had all the, uh, you know, Disney Pluses, yeah. like for kids and whatnot. For right, sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Adult content, they had the separate thing called right. Disney Star something, I can't remember. Um, okay. Okay. But yeah, they lost 4 million subscribers. I mean, that's a big hit. Yeah. You, 4 million subscribers, and if you think about six, how much is, let's say $5, right? So four, Go on. I'm trying to matter times five. Just say five dollars, like twenty million dollars. That's a lot of money, man. Um, yeah. But I don't know the exact numbers. I just made that shit up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a big hit. But I don't think that hurts Disney. I mean, look, Disney still make tons of money through their theme parks and everything. I think that's where they make most of their money and merchandise and everything. Um, but you know, hopefully that doesn't that doesn't put a halt on any of their um content that we're receiving but i have read that they you know marvel's slowing down a little bit just because they want to focus on quality over quantity which is what we want so don't lose us with shit quality um mm. of stuff so that could be a thing as well but i don't know anyway just thought i'll bring it up um this me plus um you know what, what what i found was 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 sad is when i grew up um and, and 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 seeing all these old cartoons that I used to watch to get cancelled, right? So growing up watching like Biker Mice from Mars and Shark Shark uh, Street Sharks and Beetle Boards, all these all these different things like Mask Rider and all that, they get cancelled and you don't really find out why. And then you get older and YouTube comes out and you're like, wait a minute, all of these shows got cancelled because they didn't sell fucking toys? Oh what the fuck? Oh crazy, isn't it? They fucked up our childhood. No, crazy. And then, this... you know, you look it up, and then you realize, like, yo, like, all of this month, like this, this adult money shit going on all this time. When you were younger, you had no idea, and it's like, damn. When you find out about it, it's like, oh, business. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean, when Disney yes. made, when Marvel made the deal with Sony about Spider Man, that as, as as far I'm sure there was so much more to it, but as far as I remember, Disney said, "We'll make the movie. We'll be in charge of it. We're going to use the character." Any profits from the movie, Sony, you get. But all the profits from the merchandising, we get. And Disney are smart. They know the merchandising is what's going to make the money. So that's the deal that they made. I believe so. That's what it is. People go fact check me. I don't know. But I believe I that was a big part of it. I, I think so. I mean, like, uh, you know, when you think that, like, production, that's, that ratings are good and whatever, and they still cut it because of toys, that means that the viewership is not, not that important. You know, not as important as as, as the product. So yeah, merchandise. Massive, man. It kills massive, it. massive. Kills it. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's just what's going on in the world, man. Uh, this writing strike, like I said, I heard it's is put a halt on a lot of shows, not just Disney, but tons of things out there. So I don't know really what's I don't know the, the much behind that. So um, I don't know. But anyway, moving I, on yeah, back to Mr. Nicholas Cage. We spoke about him earlier. Earlier, him and uh, Nicholas Cage and Bill Skarsgård. Uh, Gar 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 yes, are set to start in the um, Lord of War sequel in two thousand. Uh, the sequel to the two thousand and five Lord of War movie, which was like a movie about like um, like a the arms dealer. Arms dealer, exactly. Yeah, I, I never saw them. 
to be honest with you, I can't remember that one. And I need to go back and watch it. But um, it was like after the Russian war, something like the Cold War, the arms dealer, right? Yeah. Something like, like that. I've never <laughs> seen it. But um, I think, it not that the movie where they show like a bullet being manufactured and it goes through time? I remember, man. It's been such a... I feel like I haven't seen that movie. I feel like I have when I heard the word, the name. And when I go back and read on it, I'm like, maybe I haven't seen it. It's one of those ones. There's a there's a there's an image I know it's, it's one of those movies, but there's an image I remember, and it was like somebody was manufacturing a bullet, right? And it was like maybe a family member, and then it shows you where that bullet goes, and it ends up killing that person's grandson or something. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I, okay. It might be that movie or something. Or, or another movie, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> I do need to check that out. I think I need to go swallow up a movie I need to put on the list. Uh, but it's great to see Nicolas Cage still doing the thing because I'm a fan of him. So great to see yeah. that. Um, talk about old school actors. William Defoe still doing the damn thing. My guy's going to be in Beetlejuice 2 with Michael Keaton and Jenna Ortega. Is it Jenna Ortega? Yeah. Probably her. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? Okay. Well, like. I didn't know about William Defoe, you know, but I'm glad that they got Keaton back in it. Cause that of course, you can't have Bill Juice without Keaton, man. That would have been a big have been on a rider too, though. I don't know if she's in it, but uh, Jenna Ortega fits in straight, especially after a performance from Adam's family. So she fits in perfect into that movie. You can't do Bill Juice without Michael Keaton. He's just the best. And William Defoe has got a face that you can, like, he's got do one it. of those faces that he can play a character in Bill Juice, put it that way. Without much makeup is what you're saying. Without yeah. much makeup, you know. I mean, he listens yeah. to a very expressive, <laughs> expressive face, um, which oh, yeah. is why he he was awesome as 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 uh, Green Goblin, and he'll be amazing as Joker if he ever, if he ever does it. I reckon. But yes, he'll be a part of the Juice. Sorry, say again. No, I'm just saying that's it. He he will be a part of Beal Juice too, and I I'm looking forward to that one. Okay. Yeah. No, me too, man. Um. I'm gonna watch that movie again. You you out here dropping all these nuggets of movies, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what the brothers geek out do, man. We just we we drop these nuggets. We collect the information throughout the week. I can't take credit for the news coming out, but I can take a bit of credit for gathering it from fucking the internet um, yeah, and expressing it to the users. Um, it's always good stuff to know. Um, lastly, anyway, to finish off. Both Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis are currently in talks to return in the follow-up of 2003's Freaky Friday. And that's the movie where they switch bodies and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're a fan of, of, of them or if you're a fan of that movie, I remember watching that one when I was uh, in the days, but I can't tell yeah. you that I'm a mad fan. I'm going to watch it. But if you are a fan, yeah, do check it out. Lindsay Lohan, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know. Um, I don't know, maybe they switch bodies again. I don't, I don't know. But hmm. they're talking about making part movie. two. Huh? They're talking about making part, part two. two. You would watch it? I don't know. If there's yeah. nothing to do, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah. much shit to watch. Like the thing is, I've talked to kids about it the other days. Like, there's so much shit to watch. Back in the days, you'd have to watch it because it's the only thing to watch. Now it's like I got options and I want to watch it, but I need to prioritize things first. You know what I mean? So oh. I prioritize what I like. Um, over stuff that I probably wouldn't watch if I had no choice or if there was nothing else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like my, my mom said something. Like, I, have you ever heard of a show called Twin Peaks? Yes, I haven't watched it, but it sounds familiar. Yo, that show is is crazy dope. Like they, a lot happens, and they keep you on the suspense about who killed this girl. <laughs> Twenty five years. It's it's it's, uh, it's it's loopy. Um. Anyway, point is. My mom watched the show, yeah, in the 80s and stuff. And she said she watched it all the time. And I said, well, and then I had heard about it and watched it myself. And I said, how the hell, like, why would you watch this show? This is really, this is what we watch now together, like X-Files, like crazy kooky stuff. And you watching that when you're like, you know, what, in your 20s, like what drew you into that? She said, that's all we had on television. Mm. Ah, okay, I get it now. <laughs> well, think about it. Same, same with us. I mean, we had a we we started off with channels one, two, three, four, right? And then channel five came out. This is the UK I'm talking about. And I remember on certain so feels like channel two on a six o'clock, six thirty after school, you had stuff like Quantum Leap, like, and you would watch that. And you would have stuff like Fresh Prince of Ballet and whatnot. So like, this is what we grew up with, and like, you you couldn't like nowadays you skip through the channels or you skip through Netflix, and I'm like, I don't even know what to watch because there's so much shit to watch, right? And 
yes, I'll have favoritism over maybe like comic book stuff or like, I don't know, Adam Sandler, comedy movies, whatever. But there's so much good content on there. Sometimes you, you, you'll miss it because you don't know what to watch, right? But back in the days, you had no choice and you would just watch it. And you're, that's how we got into shit. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, um, but week. content is is king now. Think about it, man. Like, like any, like, fucking hell, so many platforms, movies, YouTube, there's so much content out there and there's just just enough time there's not enough time to watch it all pull it that way that's why we have to prioritize that's why like i always say you like what you like you prioritize it you watch it you enjoy it and that's what's most important whether someone else likes it or doesn't like it fuck it you don't have to watch squid games because everyone else is watching it like i'm not into that shit i'm not gonna watch it cool like do you know what i'm trying to say like you everyone has a choice and that's why i always say about the critics oh the critics of that movie shit Okay, well, why don't okay then? If that's the case, then don't watch it. If you're gonna follow the critics, but you should be your own critic. You're an individual. You might like something that someone else don't like. That's okay to do. You know, I'm trying to say it doesn't mean you're a bad person if the critics <laughs> hate a movie and you won't like it. Like this is what I'm saying. Like if 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 a movie comes out, a Marvel movie, a DC movie, especially DC. Let's put DC on on. on you know, I'm a comic book fan. The deep critics are all cussing there and this and that. I'm like, well, I'm going to go fucking watch it because I'm a comic book fan and I want to see Batman and Superman on the same screen or whatever it is. So I'm going to go watch it and I'll make the decision on myself. And yes, if the movie's shit, then it's shit. But at least I saw Batman and Superman on the same screen with some epic action and all that sort of stuff. That's all I care about, right? And if I just listened to the critic and didn't watch the movie, I would have missed that experience of, you know, seeing them on the big screen. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, I, I feel you in that, and and, and I think um, I think you know <clears throat> because we live in a society where everyone's so separated and and and, uh, and and you know like just trying to find find themselves. I think everybody is 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 very open and quick to be part of something, part of some kind of you know belonging to something. Mm, like, yes, yes, yes. Tribalism. Like, like, yeah, exactly. I think it's, I, I think it's a lot of that. Uh, a lot of that, you know situation going on there because uh, we're out here together but we alone exactly you know? and people want to you know like e even with that if you're in an opposite tribe or whatever it is people just want to disrespect you like you the amount of racist shit that we get we're, we're a small little podcast right i got sorry I, I went straight to racism which is extreme but we're a small little podcast me and kids are growing and whatnot and we get positive comments and it's amazing but the negative ones are hilarious because this individual who probably needs some help, to be honest with you, but has probably nothing going on in his life, probably, um, you know, like needs help or something. But they they got a moment where they want to get a reaction and they want to insult you with a couple of words and they go straight to racism. Like, that's the best bit. Like, that, that they think that, like, if I do something racist, that will get the reaction of these boys and that will insult them and make them feel a certain way or whatnot. So they, put, they go straight to the most, like, almost extreme thing of racism to disrespect us and stuff. And I feel like, you know, I, I don't read the co comments. Kibler does. And I'm like, Kibler, try to ignore that shit. I do the, I do the Joe Rogan post and ghost thing um, and don't let that shit get to me. But that individual probably needs help. But in my mind, I'm like, fuck them. They can say whatever they want. I mean, if it was constructive criticism to be like, gee, um, you should watch. Like, if I talk, if I say a movie was shit, for example, they're like, now, gee, look at it from this perspective. I'm like, well, that's an awesome constructive criticism. But if you're just going to be like, well, look at this packy on screen. And sorry to say the word, but that's what we, we, we record anyway. Um, you're just kind of like, oh, no, no, it was a curry something as well. It's like, well, you're just trying to insult because something's wrong at the moment in your life and you just want to insult me because of my heritage or the way I look or whatever. So it's weird. Tribalism and putting yourself in groups, it gets you to a point where you want to insult someone else in another group so bad. It's, it's such a weird human trait and it's over fucking movies and whatever, like. You know, it's not even tribes. We're not even living in different tribes and hunting and shit and trying to fight over a goat or whatever. <laughs> it's about content. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> I feel like if you're going to diss somebody, you got to make it at least funny. You know? <laughs> you you, you got to go for something a little bit more like, you know, it could be some, something funny, like maybe your eye twitches. You know, something funny. You know, something that's actually realistic. Like that other thing, like make it was funny. There was make one that funny. was funny back in the days, actually. I have to say, when my little brother came on the podcast once years ago, 
And so someone commented saying he has really pretty features. He could be, he could be a really uh, he'll he'll make a really good lady boy or something like that. And we were busting <laughs> up. That's a good one. We were busting no, that, up. That, that's great. And Ash that... was like, Ash, the thing is though, Ash was like, I'm not coming back on the screen again. Oh my! I put him I put him out. <laughs> And I was like, that's really good because you got complimented. You got actually got complimented that yeah. having pretty features and whatnot. Yeah. The lady boy thing, okay, they took it to another extreme, but it that's was actually funny. quite funny. But that's yeah, funny. you're right. Listen, just insulting people is not good, so I'm not recommending, but you're right. Make it funny if you're gonna do something. Be- make it funny. Like that, that, that's anyway. That's a shame. We move on. We move that's on. Shame. But that's it. I mean, that's all the news I have for this week. Um, like I said to you guys, oh, and, and you should know as well, I said it in the beginning of the podcast, Kibla had the baby on March 9th. Nia. Uh, Nia oh, Sophia oh. Ahmed, I believe it is. Uh, May 9th, just a couple of hours before dad's birthday on May 10th. It would have been amazing if it fell on, on two day, on the day, same day, but uh, she came out on May 9th. Uh, both mom and baby are doing well. Kibla did say she's got... Um, Oh, so I'm so she has, he has to take her to the hospital. She's got you know when the babies get yellow, what's it called? Like Jaundice. Jaundice, that's it. So he has to take her to the hospital. She's okay, but they gotta take her to the hospital anyway. Um, but she came out and uh, she scratched herself. She, her nails were already long. And as as innocent and as beautiful as seeing my new my new niece and whatnot, she she looked like she had a black eye, she had this uh, scratch, and I was like. That's my niece, man. She looked like she had an MMA fight. Like she looked, she looked like she came out fighting. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. I'm like, so cute. But obviously, you don't want to see that on a baby. But it was just like, that's my niece, man. Like, um, I don't know. I just found it to be like so cute. And I was like, yeah, she she came out fighting. Uh, and it was and it was awesome. But yes, so Kibla should be back in the next couple of weeks, maybe next week or not. But thank you, K West, for for filling in and giving your thoughts and you know, uh, I really appreciate your time doing doing this podcast, and, and you know, we can still still keep the listeners going with the news that we we get every week. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's incredible. I'm always happy to to come on, and and congratulations to you and your family as well, because um, yeah, like I, I was thinking at, at some point, like, and then when you asked me again to do the to do this show, I was thinking, okay, so it must have happened. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really glad to hear that they're both doing well, man. Congrats. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, listeners, thank you so much for watching. As always, appreciate it. Uh, do like, subscribe, all the other good stuff. Do watch out for all the other content. Look out for Fight Talk. <clears throat> Look out for, check out the gaming channel, which is slow at the moment. I need to work on that. Do check out all the other clips, the shorts. And anyway, just thanks for everything, man. So appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next week's episode. Peace. Cup and cup. All right. Let me get a pick, bro. That's it. Yeah, man. Cup and cup. Stripes. <laughs>